me? Yeah? Uh, excuse me. I... Oh, uh, just a minute, sir. Yeah. Uh, Leeds Mercury, good morning. Can I help you? No, I see. I'll have you transfer. This is an eye desk. Hello, operator. Put this through to Silvage, will you? I'm oh, sorry about that. No, sir, can I help you? Uh, I, I just felt I had to tell someone, see? I just felt I had to. Oh, is anything the matter, sir? It's murder. I, and you see, I thought you people would want to know. That's why I've come here. Well, are you trying to say you want to tell me about a murder? Is that it, sir? Now, look, Mr... Um... Simmons. Bill Simmons. Oh, right, Mr. Simmons. I mean, when did it happen? Last night? What? Well, this, uh, this murder, Mr. Simmons. Did it happen last night? Last night? No! How, how could it? Don't you understand? It wasn't last night. No, Mr. Simmons. I'm afraid I don't understand. It was 17 years ago. It was 1955, I think. I done it 17 years ago. 17 years? How long? 1955. You look it up. Amy, she was called, and I killed her in Birkenhead with a knife. 17 years back. A new play for radio by Martin Jenkins. With Robert Keegan as Inspector Flynn, Alan Downer as Bill Simmons, and Barbara Mitchell as his wife, Queenie. Seventeen years back. Keats Road Police Station, can I help you? Uh, Sergeant Traverton, uh, there's Inspector Flint calling from Strickland in Derbyshire. Oh, I'll bring you through once, sir. We've been trying to reach you all day. Uh, Sergeant Trafford's been expecting you to phone. Uh, well, now that I have phone, don't keep him waiting, lad. <laughs> Sorry, sir, I'll connect with you immediately. Uh, it's Inspector Flynn, sir. Right, put him on. I'm already on, John. Oh, I'll see. But what do you want, John? I'm busy. Well, sir, it's a bit difficult. Um, you see, I've been asked to get in touch with you about the Audrey Gransom case. Well, you've waited long enough. Well, there were complications. Well, Richard? Certain objections were raised when it was suggested you should be asked to help with the Gransom business. You're being unusually diplomatic, John. Is he breathing down your left ear, or are you hoping for a promotion? Uh, Mr. Richards is at a meeting with the chief. Oh. Well, hadn't you better relay your missive? You would have read about this man who is... Yes, John, I have read the papers. Yes, John, I have read about this man. And yes, John, he gave himself up exactly 38 hours ago. Yeah, I advise that you should be asked to return immediately, but... Uh... But you were overruled firmly. Yeah. Well, let's say, sir, the camp was divided. Hmm. Well? Well, it was your case when you were with us. You never wrapped it up. The chief constable would like you to come and help us with the case now that it's been reopened again. And friend Richards? I did say the camp was divided, sir. Yes, John, so you did. So what does the chief propose? That you should come over to us at once and see if this man's confession is true and if it fits the Gransom case. Uh, John, I've read the papers. I've waited 38 hours for this call. Of course it fits the facts. Now, I'm quite sure that this William Simmons is the man I looked for in the summer of 1955. And furthermore, I was more than prepared to come and give evidence. But to be kept waiting nearly two days. Mr. Richards wants Simmons on a murder rap. Murder? What, well, just like that? It is 17 years ago. It was a manslaughter if ever I saw one. It was written all over it. Grants have been asking it for, for years. You and I know that, sir. I think the chief also believes it would be wrong to press for a murder charge. Look, I expected you to phone, John. But as the hours went by and nothing happened, I became more annoyed. And I made up my mind that I wouldn't come. I mean, my case, and no one phones me for nearly two days. I found that very hard to stomach. I've been trying to get you since 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah, but Simmons walked into that newspaper office at 1 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. It's now 3.21 precisely on a warm and quiet Wednesday afternoon. Even at 10 this morning, but... Oh, never mind. I'm sorry, sir. I mean, my pride was there, John. You know, my case, no one called me. And now you say Richard is going for murder? I understood him to express the belief that after all this time, it would practically be impossible to prove manslaughter. Oh, August the 14th, 1955. That's well, not so long ago. If you are coming, the chief would be delighted if you could catch your train from Derby this afternoon. Out of the question. Well, he was. Yeah, very emphatic. No, I'll have to clear up a few things here first. I'll see you tomorrow about midday, in time for a decent lunch. Would that be the earliest time? Look, I have no wish to see Birkenhead again. I'm coming at your invitation, and I shall come in my own time. Is that understood? Of course. Would you like a car to meet you off the train at Lime Street? No, John. I would like you to meet me off the ferry at Woodside, and I'll phone you when I arrive at Liverpool. And you can work out what time I'll be at Woodside. Are you sure you won't prefer a car to meet you? I prefer not to come at all. But it is a manslaughter and not a murder, and that's why I'm coming. Uh, goodbye, John. I'll phone you from Lime Street. Over here, sir. John, nice to see you again, sir. And you... Good journey. But the train was on time and the river was smooth, but empty. Aye. It's very dead some days. But do we walk? 
I'm afraid he's the car. Superintendent Richards insisted. Is Richards in charge? Sir? In overall charge, sir. How's Mrs. Trubber, John? Oh, we get along, sir. Watch as before. And Richards didn't want me to come back. It was your case, sir. Yeah, along with a thousand others. Mm. But not many of them were unsolved. Oh, we solved this one, John. The only thing was, we never discovered the one missing link. The man who killed Audrey Granson. Aye. Well, here's the car, sir. Oh, where are we going? Deeds Road. The superintendent asked me to see that you had everything you required. Including you? <laughs> you raised no objections. And I was on the case with you. Well, that didn't stop him kicking in the past, did it? Uh, no need to answer that. Even the cars are plusher now. Uh, where did the Simmons turn up? He walked into the offices of the Leeds Mercury at 104 on Tuesday morning and told the desk clerk that he wanted to confess to a murder. After 70 years. <laughs> That's what the paper must have thought. They contacted Leeds City and then they contacted us. I didn't stop them altering their morning headlines. I got it on the same. Uh, Simmons, Christian name William. Any others? Gwyn. He's Welsh. Born in some unpronounceable place near Cardiff. Age 40, but looks nearly 60. Balding, deep set eyes, brown, has a small scar over his left eye. Otherwise, very undistinguished physically. Have you seen him then? He's got form. Been in a mix six times since 1956. His last sentence was one year for attempted robbery, Doncaster, 1970. Came out in February. Any GBH? Nothing on the files, except a reported assault on a prison officer at Lay Hill, but there appear to have been mitigating circumstances. And no form before 1956. A virgin page. Do you think he's our man? already told you. Do you? Certainly fits. A year, the description of the house, but, well, it's Simmons himself. Yeah? From all accounts, it seems he's a bit of a nutter. Yes, sir. Uh, he's been very odd. One of the blokes in Walton Prison was telling me this morning. Odd? Yes, muddled, confused. He claims that Audrey was something of a raving beauty. He keeps getting all worked up about being hung. Hanged. No, I'm sorry. It's no, essential no, for a policeman to be grammatically correct about the death sentence, despite the fact that it has been abolished. I mean, it could still come back, you know. Hanged. All right, I shall want to see Simmons later this afternoon. A raving beauty. Still so sure he's your missing link. John, a man doesn't confess to a 17-year-old murder and get so many basic facts right if he didn't do it. And what we have to find out all over again is why and how. And then try to find out why Audrey has suddenly become a sleeping beauty. He could still be just a nutter. He could have read about the case. Met the man who really did it anything. I don't uh, think we can John, we have to start from what we know. We also have to gamble. Now, I sense Simmons is my man. We start firmly believing that and go on believing it until we get one fact that says my assumption is definitely wrong. Right? The house stood just there. Under that second support pillar. Four bedrooms. Ma Weston was in the attic. She owned the lease on the place. Charlie Williams had one of the single rooms, but didn't come home that night. Yeah, alibi checked. Can't game up. You finish seven beyond the bar of the Oriel Arms in Everton. Missed the last bus and decided to stay with a friend. One double room occupied by Audrey and another by Jenny Hutchins. We discovered Audrey's body at about 7.30 a.m. she came come down for a glass of milk, I think. She ran to the people next door, phoned us, and we arrived shortly after 7.45. Jenny was waiting for us with a milkman who'd come back to the house with her. Uh, shortly before 7.43 exactly. Well, give it take a second. Uh, Jenny was a very frightened little girl, terrified by finding Audrey, and even more scared because it could easily have happened to her. Do you know where she is, sir? No? After the inquest and the initial investigations were over, she disappeared, left a forwarding address. False? No. The only one left, as far as I know, is Charlie. No. Where's he? Still at the Oriel. He lives in one of the new housing estates near Arrow Park. I can find out quickly enough. He still passes on the odd tip off, nothing big. A few odds and ends he overhears, makes a few extra quid. Will there be any point in chasing him up? He never saw the man. Are we sure? His alibi was watertight. No question? He said he left the house just before five. And we know he reached the pub shortly after six. Yeah, but Jenny Hutchins told us that Audrey had gone to the Oreo that night. She, well, she said she often went there for a drink. We checked at the Oreo and several people remembered Audrey because they'd seen her before, but no one could remember who she was with. A Charlie, on the other hand, was very cool. And said he had no recollection at all of Audrey coming in that night, although she did sometimes nip in if she was passing. And no one could positively recall seeing Charlie talk to Audrey. Of course. It, you know, I'd forgotten all that. You thought it, Charlie. Uh, not only then, but now as well. I, look, I still believe that Charlie and Audrey were working a racket. We might prove it this time. Uh, this place was filled with shops. I caught them all. Now there's only cars and more cars. 
Right, I want a general call put up for Ma Weston and Jenny Hutchins, and I want you to check the Charlie Instant living room. Ma Weston must be a hundred if she's a day. <laughs> I've known her 30 years. She looked like Queen Victoria when I was a fresh-faced lad on the beat. Right, that enough. Right. I've got picked up the scent again. I suppose we might as well make use of that office Mr. Richards has so generously provided. Come on. Hasn't changed much. Do you have a coat of paint? Watkins, tell Superintendent Richards, Inspector Flynn has arrived. Relax, John. Richard won't bite, and I'm no different. Maybe over two and a half years since I moved to Derbyshire, but uh, I don't need to be treated with kid gloves. You know. Sorry, sir. How the hell do you work in a place like this? You should know you were here for over 20 years. If we're going to be kept waiting for Mr. Richards much longer, I think I should like a cup of tea. He did say uh, he wanted to see you immediately. Punctuality always was one of his strongest points. Oh, he still is. Except with me. Come here, Tommy. They said you'd arrived. I've been here for a few minutes. Yeah. Right. Come along into the office. Get your coat and things off. Uh, get some tea, would you, Crawford? Yes, sir. Uh, look, if we're uh, going to discuss any aspect of the guns and cases, I should like John to be present. If that's all right. Plenty of time, Lloyd. Right? After all, it's waited 17 years. I don't think another few minutes is going to make all that difference. Now, in here. Sit down. I've had an office put aside for you. Not your old one, I'm afraid. Andrew Madley's in there, but I thought... A cup of tea first. Help get the dust. Julian, dry uh, am I in charge? No, not technically. Uh, never mind, technically. Who is? You? Officially, I have to be. After it had been decided that you should be asked back to assist on the case, it was then decided that I should be in overall control. But everything will be left to you, of course. You didn't want me to come? Hmm? Frankly, no. I saw absolutely no necessity to bring you back. However, the chief felt differently, and uh, here you are. I'll be frank with you, Tommy. The chief is obviously putting me through some sort of character test to see how I cope with sharing responsibility, particularly sharing it with someone whose methods are, shall we say, unorthodox. He'll be watching me like a hawk. Well, good luck to you. You won't rile me, Tommy. You used to, but not this time. Not with him watching, not with promotions in the offing. Anyway, the whole thing seems very straightforward to me. You want to go for a murder charge? I think there'll be no difficulty. In getting a conviction? Isn't that what you've come for, to get this man convicted? Have you read my notes on the case? Yes. Then you'll know it was a manslaughter. Well, after half 17 years, I hardly think it matters. Look, Julian, I'm not going for a straight murder rap. This man killed Audrey Granson because she had taken money off him. I mean, he lost his head and struck a dozen wild blows with a half blunt knife. When we got there, the woman was still alive but unconscious. It was a horrible mess. She had the torn corner of a pound note still clutched in her hand. Yes, I read all this, but you could never prove anything. No, I had no killer, and not one of the witnesses would tell the truth. At first they talked, but after we failed to catch the man, they shut up tight. But it was manslaughter, and that's what I intend to prove now. I see. Aren't you interested why a bloke wanders into a newspaper office and confesses to a murder after 17 years? Of course, but... I mean, if he wants to get off his conscience, then I want to know why. And I also want to know why he did it in the first place. I thought you said you already knew. Oh, I know, yeah, but I've also already said I have to prove it now. This was the biggest case I left unfinished, and I hated that. If it's going to be cleared up, then I want to be the one to do it. And, and you are. my way. Tommy, I never approved of your methods. I still don't. I know you despise me because I work by the book, but that's how I want things. I didn't want you anywhere near this force. But I was overruled. Now you are here, and I want to ensure that what you do in no way upsets what I'm doing here. Yeah. Does that mean that you don't want me to root out the truth? Of course it doesn't. If you think this man is guilty of manslaughter, then by all means prove it. It's how you prove it that concerns me. Things are working oh, well here. Yeah? I'm old, don't... Julian. Teeth falling out, eyesight going, not a streak of black hair left. I'm like Samson. I've lost my sting. I won't upset your scheme of things. Just let me get on with it, and as soon as I'm satisfied, I'll get back to my backwater. Where do you intend to begin? I want to remember everything I can about the case. The house, the people, the kitchen, the knife. What I can before looking at a single note. And then I shall want to see Simmons. Mm. I'll phone the governor at Walton to make the arrangements. I shall come with you. And then start tracing the witnesses. Probably all dead or fled the country. Yeah, maybe. If they have, then I want to know. The young girl, she was the chief witness? 
little Jenny Hutchins, just over 17. She lied just like the other two in the house. Mm. Charles Williams and the old woman in the attic flat, uh, Mrs. Mabel Weston. Oh, uh, was that her name? <laughs> First thing I've forgotten so far. I don't think I ever heard her called Mabel. She was known to everyone as old Ma Weston, tough as bricks, been away for running brothels, devout Catholic and ardent Tory. She used to cause no end of trouble at church bazaars and Tory garden parties, hobnobbing with the magistrates who put her away. She must be a hundred if she's still alive. Well, I haven't heard of it recently. Trafford might know. Yeah, he doesn't, but uh, he'll find out if she is still with us. Come. The tea, sir. Oh, excellent. Uh, uh, will you be mother, Sergeant? Yes, sir. When can I see Simmons? Uh, shall we say Walton at four? Excuse me, sir. Leeds phoned a few minutes back, and Mrs. Simmons is on her way over. She'll be here about seven or eight. I hardly think uh, it's Anything else, John? Well... The young copper went to see her as soon as they got on to the address says that she was extremely agitated when he told her that her husband had confessed to her murder. She said, he's done it then. I knew he would. When the constable explained it happened in 1955, she couldn't believe it. She seemed prepared to accept the fact that he'd just done something. He also adds that she had several bruises on the left side of her face and that her left eye was badly swollen. Someone in the road volunteered the information that Simmons hadn't been home for about four or five days. Hmm. Friendly of them, eh? Is that all? Yes, sir. Observe a young man that... Uh, there's hope for the force yet, Julian, with keen-eyed coppers like that. So she thought she'd done someone now, not 17 years ago. Almost prepared for it. And a black eye. Yes, sir. Right. Now, uh, I want to see Charlie Williams sometime tonight. See how he's reacted to Simmons' confession. If he leaves the Orly at 11 or so, he should be just in time for a midnight visitor. Will you require any assistance? Oh, Charlie's an old friend, Julian. He'll be delighted to see me. Now, uh, give John me a couple of undisturbed hours, and then we can all join forces and go to Walton. That is, if you still feel it essential for you to come. Ask WPC Chambers to have my car ready for 3.58, Stratford. Very good, sir. All right, I want to go over the story that Jenny told us and then have a little recap on Charlie. Make sure I've got all my facts right before our reunion. Uh, two hours, then, Julian? First, Jenny was quite emphatic. She says that Audrey popped into her room about 12 that night and told her she'd got a chap staying and not to make too much noise in the morning. But later she went back on the statement and said she never saw Audrey that night. Yeah, on the morning of the 14th, when we first interviewed her, she talked all sense. Then she started to realise how involved she was and she shut up. It was during the morning that she also said that Audrey had been across to the Oriel Arms that previous evening and had seen Charlie. You pressed the point and asked her why she should go all the way over to Everton for a drink, and she said because Audrey and Charlie were good friends and that she always drank. Or sometimes drank there, but nearly always when she got a fella stain. Now, that was the point. She took men guests to the Oriel. Why? So she could let Charlie know she had a sucker in tow. Yes, but why? I mean, not to give any strange kind of cheap thrill, because I believe Charlie then used to phone Mal Weston, tell her the coast was clear, so she could uh, go down and work over the chap's room to see if there's anything she could steal without him noticing. Mm. At least uh, until he was well away from the house and could have difficulty proving anything. And that's what you think Charlie did on the night of the 13th? Of course he did. I mean, they'd been working again for a couple of years. I expect Ma used to give him some sort of rake up. A couple of bob extra pocket money. Charlie would have felt uncomfortable with anything more than a quid. In all the years I knew him, he'd never take more than a pound. Mm. Did Jenny know what was going on? We decided definitely yes, and that she was in on the racket as well. But on the night on the 13th, she had nobody and went to bed on her own. At 7.30 a.m., she went downstairs to get a drink and found Audrey, as she thought, dead. She guessed what had happened and at the beginning almost told us the whole setup. But then she changed her mind and started backtracking and lying. Yeah, that was when Ma Wester was brought down. There was over 250 quid in pound and ten in notes in her room. Her savings for a rainy day. We couldn't possibly prove that any of those notes had been taken off the men who visited the house. And nothing would budge the old bird. She denied stealing money. She denied living off immoral earnings. And we could prove nothing against her. It was all circumstantial. Defence counsel mincemeat. But we were damn close, John. <laughs> if Jenny had gone on talking, we would have had them all. Sergeant Trafford. Oh, yes, put him on. Hello, Potter. Yes. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see. Well, no, keep well away. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Potter. I was right. Charlie is still at the Oriel and lives at flat 1835 Willow Way near Arrow Park. It's a big block of flats. Mm. Anything on Mutchins or Western? 
Not yet. I shouldn't expect anything over for at least a couple of days. Well, let's hope I'm not dead before it finally seeps through. Now, I want to go over the actual killing. Get the details absolutely cleared again. Now, Audley's body was slumped up against the table, and some of her red hair had got caught on a splinter in one of the table legs. Thank you. We are not when we're ready to leave. Simmons? Huh? I'm Superintendent Richards of Birkenhead Police. And this is Inspector Flynn of Strickland, Derbyshire. He was the officer in charge of the investigation into the death of Audrey Gransom. I want you to answer any questions he or this other officer may wish to ask you. Do they call you Bill? Billy, sometimes. It depends. Like at home, it was always Quinn. Home being near Cardiff. St. Henry, where the great pit disaster was. Coal town. Coal and shunting engine. Nothing else much. Why'd you do it? I've already said. Yeah, well, tell me. She'd been thieving off me. Taking money and things. So you killed her? I had to. And then 17 years later, you walk into a newspaper office and tell them you battered an old whore to death. Now, why'd you do that? I don't know. You sure you did kill her, Billy? Does Queenie know? His wife, sir. No, she knows, Billy. She's on her way here. Stealing money, see? She was pinching money all the time. Does Queenie know you killed her? What? You been married a long time? After it happened. Long after it happened. Yes, but did you tell her what you'd done? Well, she was thieving. Yes, but did you tell Queenie? Tell her what? Did you at any stage tell your wife you had murdered Audrey Granson? What's the matter? Don't you believe me? Don't you think I done her in? Is that what you think, that I didn't do it? There's been blood on these hands, see? You take me out of this place and I can show you the actual house. If you don't believe me, I'll show you. The house was knocked down five years ago. It's not her fault. I've been drinking too much, getting drunk too many nights. You, you can't blame her stealing You killed Audrey Johnson because you were stealing, I you? told you her name was Amy. The warden said he's been like this all day. He's in a bad way, poor sod. At least it proves we are right. Audrey had been pinching his money. Is there any point in going on? Her name was Amy. She told me she'd been good to any number of boys in the Army and the Navy. Amy and Navy Sauce, she called her place. <laughs> I remember her place. Yes? Oh, uh, excuse me, but uh, s some of the lads say I can get a room here for the night. On your own, are you? Yeah. Well, come a bit more into the light. I can't see your face proper. Oh, uh... <clears throat> What are you? A driver off the lorry? Someone recommend me, do they? How much do you charge? Depends on what you're thinking of buying. Uh, it'll only be the one night, a uh, single room and breakfast. Come inside. Breakfast is extra. Just, uh, uh, tell me how much, all inclusive. Twenty-five shillings. What? Oh, you must be joking. This is a good house. Decent mattresses and clean sheets, not like some of the dumps around here. Well, not made of money, see? Bet you've got enough to give a girl a good time, though, haven't you? Enough. Oh, look, I wouldn't do this for everyone, but seeing as it's you, make it a quid. But no less, mind you. Uh, can I see the room? Right, little fuss part, aren't we? All right, come upstairs. Cops to bitch and all to keep a place like this, what with the cleaning and all. Oh, yeah? You'll be going out tonight. Yeah, have a look round, like, see what's going on. Look for a nice little girl. Maybe. Wouldn't I do, then? I thought you said nice. Yeah, less of your flipping cheek. This is it, then. Hot and cold and hot air. Very comfortable. Stands any amount of horse play. <laughs> Go on, feel it. Very nice. Cash in advance. One pound, we said. That's if you just have the bed and breakfast. Yeah, well, we see about that later. Here you are. One pound. Yeah, I thought you said you hadn't much money. You are loaded. Now, are you going to take me out tonight? And when we come back here, we'll be together like that. Eh? If I feel like it. 
And if you pay enough... Now, look here. If, if I take you out, buy you a meal and stuff, then you'll... Uh, you know... Hey, don't you go getting any big ideas. I'm not some cheap whore you can treat like muck, you know. I've got class and you pay for that. I mean, I run a respectable house here and I don't let everyone take liberties with me. Not by a long show. Well, that was your idea. Yeah, well, I liked you, didn't I? I'm the colour of my money. So take me out, then. All right. Well, then you get ready. I'll leave you the key so you can lock your door. Everything will be quite safe. I just go and throw my face on. You know something? I'm glad you come tonight. I was feeling like a night out. <laughs> Where are we going? Do you fancy a drink first? Get us warmed up like. If you like. A friend of mine is a nice pub over the water. The uh, Oriel Arms in Everton. Uh, right by the ground. Oh, it's your party. Just so long as we get back in time for a good night. Oh, <laughs> you chaps are all the same, right, Randy? I won't be long. Ten minutes, okay? Here, by the way, what's your name? Mine's Audrey. Bill. You can call me Bill. Ten minutes, Bill. Don't know about you, but I'm dry as flies for a drink. <laughs> Get me in that pub. By ten o'clock, I'll be ready for anything. You mean have a good sense of fun? Uh, show him the report. See? It's there in black and white. She was called Audrey. Audrey, not Amy. Uh, you sure it's the same woman? I don't want to waste my time or the time of these other officers chasing after shadows. I thought she said her name was Amy. And did you also think perhaps that you killed her? No. No, I didn't think that. I did kill her. I'm certain of that. I could, I could show you the exact place. I could find it quite easy. Mr. Flynn's already explained to you that the house in which Audrey Granson's body was discovered has been pulled down. There's nothing left of that area at all. It's all been swept away. And what else do you remember about her? I think I told these men yesterday. Well, tell me. Not much. What was she wearing? I don't know. Well, what about her style? Eh? Hey? Well, did she have it up? Was she wearing a hat? Did she have blue eyes, pink fingernails, something? Simmons, you must remember something. Well, she was... She was a strange girl. Strange in what way? Well, she didn't want to scream. There, there, there were no screams. No screams. Just a long sigh. I... I don't think she wanted to be heard. No screams. Are you sure? And she was very beautiful. She had beautiful skin. Doesn't sound like all that. up. In what way was she beautiful, Billy? How was she beautiful? I'm d drinking too much. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I keep getting this, this pain. It keeps coming. I, it'll, it'll go soon. Can you remember how beautiful she was, Billy? Uh, are you remembering? He's not going to say Will you shut up? I keep trying to tell you. I can see her. I can see her. Show him the photographs. Ah, but you don't need photographs, do you, Billy? You can see her, you say. Uh, tell me about her. You say she's lovely? My God, they'll hang you, you bastard. You'll swing. You'll swing. Who swing, Billy? Swing, you bastard. Leave him, Are you frightened of swinging? I don't... The rope, Billy. Are you frightened of the rope? She was bloody... Will they beauty. put the rope round you? She had blonde hair. Fine, silky blonde hair. Blonde? Yes. Yes, it was loose, long, blonde. Yeah. What else, Billy? I liked her eyes. Yes, I remember her eyes, very soft. She made me feel warm. I didn't want to kill her. But you did, Billy, and for that you'll swing. Very soft. She said I'd swing. She said that. I, I feel... Well, I won't mind, see? I won't mind swinging. I deserve to, see? But will it be enough? I've told you I did it. And she said I would. Did she tell you she was beautiful? Billy, did Audrey, did your Amy tell you she was beautiful? Did she? How do you think I've worn, then? Eh? Oh. I'll answer that later. Oh, don't get all upset, love. Plenty of time. Want to wait till it's dark light, don't we? You want another drink? Ah, now, that is the way to a girl's art. But you know that, don't you? <laughs> That's what I like about tops. They say sort of fresh things to you. You know what I mean? They make words sound good. I like that. Another half. Oh, could I have a gin? Oh, you're costing me a fortune. But I'll be worth it, see? Hey, Charlie. Yes, sir. Gin for me. Find the best for my friend. Hi, Joe, darling. He's a nice boy, Charlie. Been around here for years. Knows all of us. Well, I mean, suppose he was after working here for years. Yeah. You know, you talk sometimes. Decent talk. You know, come across and sit with you. 
And once he took me back to his place. Nothing happened. We just sat and talked and listened to his records. A smashing collection, all neatly packed up in cardboard boxes. Hey, do you like music? Depends, doesn't it? Oh, I know what you mean. Some of it's good and some of it's just well. Nothing. I is used it? to sing in a choir. You never. I did. Proper choir, I don't know. We had a conductor who knew it all. Get away! In 1950, we sang in a festival in Cardiff. Cardiff? Well, just outside. Not far though, a few miles by train. Do you know, I've never been down that way. I so fancy it somehow. <laughs> We've another you tap here. Don't have to go visiting to have a butcher's. At its point. Happens to be all. Here we are, then, look. A pint of ale and a sparkling glass of mother's ruin. How much? You make three pots. <laughs> Did anyone else have a dollar? Which is it? Charlie, this is a friend of mine. Oh, yeah? We're having a nice evening together, aren't we, Billy? Yeah. I'm being taken for a slap up meal after this. Well, good for you, then, love. Three shillings, mate. Three shillings. Not very much. Yeah, come and join us if you've got a minute like. You know, he thinks like an off. Yes, it's like bad here tonight, darling. Right. Worse than after the game on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> See you, love. See you, Charlie. Oh, he's a nice man. She is. Look. Uh, How old would you say he was? How the hell should I know? Do you know me? I always get quite shocked by how old people are. Charlie? Well, he's knocking on 50. You wouldn't think that, would you? Not by looking at him. He's fat. Hmm, yeah, but then they do, don't they? Do what? Get fast, barmen. All those three others, they get over the counter. <laughs> How old are you, then? Hmm? Guess. You don't half enjoy guessing, games. Well, go on, then. Thirty-five. Do I look that? Well, you are. Thirty-five? Well, you could be younger, see, but then I'm not much good at guessing. Thirty-two. Six. And you have worn well. What? You asked me if I thought you'd worn well. Oh, yeah. And I think you have. You can still pretend to get away with 32. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You're no more 32 than my mother. Are you calling me a liar? I am. Well, now you listen here to me, because just because I'm on the game, that doesn't give you some god all right to speak to me like you that. Oh, me. you. You're all the same. Look, does it matter to you how old I am? Is that any bother to you? Is it so... I know you men all the same. One thing, all one right, thing. All right, so I answered and you don't like it. No need to get steamed up. True, I don't care how old you are. See, it doesn't matter to me. You asked, though. Oh, I'm not honest. Something. 32. <laughs> I haven't been 32 for far too long. For far too long. Okay. So you're not 32 and I'm not 18. You're not much more than 18, though, are you? 23. Ah. I like you, Bill. I can talk to you. Have a conversation, like. I don't get all that much chance for conversing. Not now. Are you? Do you mind? Chat to people, you know, off and on. Look, we'll go now. It's gone half nine, see? Oh, we'll have another drink. You and me, eh? If another we drink. are going to have a meal as well, then we start looking now, right? Oh, all right. If you say so, sir. Hey, we're off now, Charlie. Good night, love. Good night. I shall do anything I wouldn't say. <laughs> have you got enough money? For a meal. You can leave it all locked up in your room, did I've you? I've got enough. Well, now, I want a nice meal, mind. You know... You've made me feel good. Sort of good inside. You know what I mean? Twenty-three. It's been cold. Come on round here, we can get a taxi. Across over the road there, we can get a tram. Yeah, I thought nice men always took beautiful ladies in taxis. Uh, perhaps they do. You'll have to ask them. Fancy you guessing I was thirty-five. I think that's clever, you know. Oh, come on then. Let's get on the tram. I suppose it's worth slumming it with a little toffee. She was beautiful, see? I should know that. That's what made it all so bad. It would, Billy. It would. Ever since I was a small kid, I used to hate seeing other lads pull up flowers and things. But where we were, there wasn't much beauty, so... So I hate, to, hate them doing that. That's really, I mean, I mean, they grow again, don't they? I think we should lay off him, Tommy. He's had enough. I, I remember once they strangled a cat with a skippy rope. He swung back and forth. He did very limp. It'll be just like that for me. Only they won't hang you. That's all over, Billy. Had enough? I haven't, but he has. Ready. All right, we've finished. Uh, for now. 
I got it all down, sir, but it didn't make much sense. Huh? Why? Because it doesn't, not to me. Sense? No, not the way we see it. Ready? Cheerio, Billy. Old boy is really around the twist. I'm not so sure. Sorry. He's not. Not in your sense, anyhow. And Tommy, I do think you want to be more careful. Now, why is that? Well, if the man's not unbalanced, then he certainly is sick. Oh, he's sick. Why does he keep on going on about being hanged? Probably doesn't realize it's been abolished, poor devil. Uh, not as he is now, no. Will we be seeing you some more today, Julian? Well, if I can be of any help. You can't. Yeah. Very well. I'll tell the governor we've finished with Simmons for today. You will report back to me tonight. Trafford will. But if anything... John urgent... will tell you. Uh, Tommy, he's confessed. All we've got to do is prove it. That's all we want, a conviction for murder. And I'll be starting on the old evidence, calling on witnesses. Yeah. Very good, then. I'll leave you to it. All right, let's get out of here and see what Charlie has to say for himself. Who is it? A friend, Charlie. What friend? I'm not open that door to no friend whose voice I don't know. Come on, Charlie, open. It's a long time I grant you, but you know who I am. No, I don't. We're both older, Charlie. What do you want? To talk to you. Preferably inside. No. I can get a warrant. A warrant? Oh, Mr. Flynn! Oh. Yeah, of course, of course, Mr. Flynn, yeah. Yeah, just open up, Mr. Flynn. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize your voice. Thanks, Charlie. Can't be too careful, you know, Mr. Flynn. Lots of bloody young hooligans hang around these IRI's flats, just looking for trouble. Here, I, th I thought you'd gone to another manor. I did. Oh, yeah, then, uh, what are you doing back here, then? If it's ever come over, especially because I was sudden craving to see you, Charlie, would you believe me? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Bill Simmons, mean anything to you? Oh, now, look, Mr. Flynn, I'm knocking 70. I mean, I keep myself to myself, you know. I want a quiet life now. You know, listen to me, a few records, nothing more. This Simmons killed Audrey Danson. Oh, oh, yeah. Of course, you don't remember it, do you? Uh, but what did you say her name was, Mr. Flynn? August the 14th, 1955, her body was found in the kitchen of 64 Cedars Road, the house in which you had a rented room. Audrey, the charter used to pass on tips to you, the Oreo. Do you need any more to jog your memory? Oh, Mr. Flynn, that's a long time ago. Oh, yeah, I remember the poor kid. I mean, still have nothing to do with me, Mr. Flynn. Birkenhead 3124. You used that number quite a lot, didn't you? Oh, I, I don't think Look, so. Charlie, you may be nearly 70, but you're not senile. You see, this time I know what happened because, uh, well, Simmons told us. He's told us the whole story. The fellow who said he'd done Audrey, he, he told you. Well, he's got no reason to lie to us, Charlie. No, he's nothing serious, Mr. Flynn. I mean, I was never properly involved, Mr. Flynn. Not even when it was murder, Charlie. Oh, you know me, Mr. Flynn. I mean, I'll help who I can, like, you know, pass on the odd tip. Anything I hear about a job, it's going to be done on the docks. Yeah, yeah, you used to pass the wings of our Western Roddy Cranston and some poor sucker in town that he was loaded. That was it, wasn't it, Charlie? Nothing much. What did Weston give you? Half a crown for being a big boy? Oh, you can't prove that. Oh, but Charlie, I can. And I will. I want you to spend your 70th birthday with all the lads in Walkney you put away there, wishing you a happy birthday. I want you inside for what you did. Understand? All right, all right, Mr. Finn, I'll tell you. I used to phone up, but I, I didn't know what was going on, I swear it. And after Roddy got done, I skipped it, didn't I? Got out of that place fast and moved up here. I didn't know the magic it was going to kill her, Mr. Flynn. Ah, oh, but he did though, didn't he? Now, where's Jenny? Oh? Uh, look, don't play around anymore, Charlie. Jenny Hutchins, the girl who found all... Oh, now, look, you leave her alone, eh? I mean, she's nothing to do with all that, I swear. You swear? Look, Charlie, I don't give tuppence for your feelings or your demonstrations of concern. Where is Jenny? I don't know. Look, it's just possible that I could put in a good word and perhaps you could spend that birthday of yours with adoring relatives instead of inside. I haven't got any relatives. Very well. You're a right bastard, Charlie. A mutual epitaph, surely. Oh, look, Jenny's gone straight ever since. Can't you leave her alone? Yeah, very touchy. Where, Charlie? Look, Mr. Finn, I didn't tell you. She still goes under the audio for the old John Stein drink. When? Wednesday's and Friday. John? Just after opening. First time of any crowd, she scarfers. Thank you, Charlie. You've been very helpful. I may need to call you when the trial reopens, but don't leave the country or anything stupid, will you? Here. That's with a tip off. Now, uh, just open the door and I'll slip away before the neighbour starts suspecting you're a rother's knife. See you in court. Trafford? Yes, sir? Any news of Mr. Flynn? He's just as many call in, sir. He's been seeing Charlie Williams. It seems he's got to lead to Jenny Hutchins. Yes, but did you tell him Mrs. Simmons was here and that I'd been waiting very patiently to interview for well over one hour? Yes, sir, I did. And? Mr. Flynn's will be here in ten minutes, sir. That was exactly two minutes and twenty seconds ago. Bring Mrs. Simmons into my office. Wouldn't it be better to wait? You heard what I said, Sergeant. Please do as I ask immediately. Yes, sir, at once, sir. And, Sergeant, bring your notebook so that you can show Mr. Flynn that I've not bribed the witness. I'll get Mrs. Simmons. Go 
Constable? Sir? Tell Mr. Flynn to come across to my office as soon as he returns. And I want no calls until I let you know. Come in. Ah, oh, Mrs. Simmons. I'm very sorry to have kept you waiting. Uh, please do sit down. A chair, Sergeant. Yes, sir, of course. Is Billy here, then? Uh, no, all in good time, Mrs. Simmons. Look, now, where is he? I've a right to know, haven't I? I'm his wife. He's in Walton Jail. He was remanded in custody this morning. I think, Mrs. Simmons, you understand what that means. Oh, too flipping right, I do. Look, mister, I know my Billy, and he's not a violent man. Anyway, why would he want to go and say he killed some girl all them years ago? I mean, no one would, would they? Your husband is absolutely certain in his own mind. That's why we want to... I've nothing would. to say. It would be much easier if you would cooperate, Mrs. Simmons. Easier for who? You or him? For Billy, in the long run. Oh, oh, Billy, is it now? Mrs. Simmons, has your husband ever said anything about killing anybody or hinted that he might have Oh, known? yes, every day. I mean, he used to recount all the gory details to me over breakfast, you Mrs. know. Mrs. Simmons, this is... Isn't, isn't that what you want me to say? You really must think I'm stupid. I'm saying nothing more till I've seen him. Mrs. Simmons, I think I should warn you. Oh, that... are you arresting me as well? I should warn you that your husband is a very sick man. Sick? Since he walked into the newspaper office in Leeds, we've... Well, we've been very worried about your husband's behaviour. He has a great difficulty in making himself understood. Well, he gets very tired. And when he does, he, he begins imagining things. That's what he's doing now. He's made up all this murder story. No, Mrs. Simmons, it all fits. He's told us about the woman, the place, the time, everything. Do you believe him? It all fits. And what if he denied ever having said it tomorrow? Would it all fit then? Mrs. Simmons, I know this must have all come as a deep shock to you, but you must understand that your husband has voluntarily confessed to a murder. Oh, my God. Our investigations have since shown that the facts he's given us bear a very close resemblance to an unsolved murder inquiry 17 years I ago. I don't care what your investigations prove. He didn't do it. I'm sorry you're taking this attitude, Mrs. Simmons. I assure you we're equally anxious to try to clear up this matter as quickly as possible. By locking him up. Is that how you think you're going to get what you want? Beat hell out of him and then he'll say anything you want? Uh, really, Mrs. Simmons? Oh, so you Mrs. Simmons, me. I know all about you and your investigation. Mrs. Simmons, your husband is really very sick. Please, try to understand. Yeah, and you try to understand this, see. I don't believe my Billy done anything. I know him. I know what you've done to him before. We are not seeing him. I'm saying nothing more. I want to have a solicitor. I know my rights. I want him to hear everything I've got to say to you and for him to hear your threat. Nobody has threatened you, Mr. I'm Simmons. saying nothing more. Would you like a cup of tea? Mrs. Simmons, for the last time, we only want to help you and your husband. By sticking him behind bars again, a fine type of help, that is. No, that is not our intention. Well, then what is? Mr. Flynn, Booty! What... Another one of you lot. Go and get that tea, Sergeant. But, sir... The tea, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Now, Mrs. Simmons... Ah, one against one. No witnesses, is that it? Has your husband ever killed anyone, Mrs. Simmons? Warren, you must be joking. What gave you that crazy idea? He's never laid a finger on a soul. I've told you he's not like that. Yes, yes, you've told me. Now, look, get this straight. I've had enough, see. I came here to see my husband, and you're keeping me here against my will. I want to see him now. Uh, why the hell did you have to have enough for tea? Because I want... That's all I told you. I wanted him in on everything. If I couldn't be in here, then he would be. And not in some bloody canteen getting tea. He's only been gone about a minute. Look, if I'm going to handle this case, I want to do it my way. Not yours. The Trafford's not the chief constable's, but mine. Oh, you know what you want. Hey, who are you? Now, look, is that understood, Richards? My way and no one else's. I'm warning you, Tom. You're not on this matter now. And I'm... You what? What, I've been kicked off? I'm a guest, an invited guest, and you invited me. All right, all right. Now then, who are you? This is Simmons' wife. Oh, you've been kicking up too, I Now, hear. just you listen here. You can shout at each other till the cows come home, but you're We're not... We're not shouting, Mrs. Simmons. We were establishing a working relationship. I suppose you think that's clever. Not clever, no. Essential. You'd agree, Julian? Mrs. Simmons is refusing to tell us anything about her husband. Yeah, Trapper told me. A frightened of something, Mrs. Simmons? What should I be frightened of? Your husband? Us? The man in the moon? You tell me. I'm saying nothing. Don't be childish, Queenie. It gets very boring. How do you know? Your name? Oh, I know a lot about you, Queenie. I know, for instance, he's taken to knocking you about. That is a monstrous thing to say. Stop lying, Mrs. Simmons. Now, look here, I won't be called a liar. You heard him. You heard him call me a liar. Uh, come in, Sergeant. 
He's just in time to hear me repeat to Mrs. Simmons here that she's a liar. Oh, very good, sir. Hey, Mrs. Simmons. Queenie, there's no need to lie. I don't like it. Not in a case like this. We're not playing games. Billy's ill. So you say. Yes, I do say, Queenie. He's a very sick man. He says he killed him, I believe him, but I don't know when. But they said it was 17 years ago. what back. I say, Queenie. Billy killed, yes, but when? 17 years ago or yesterday? Or both? Are you having me on? When he went into the offices of the Leeds paper, he didn't know where he was. Today in Walton, he keeps talking about some lovely girl he thinks he killed. Was she pretty? Pretty? Was who pretty, Queenie? This, this woman is supposed to have done. Well, we don't know who he's supposed to have killed, Queenie. We don't know. The young copper who came round to the house this morning said you thought he killed an old pro in some house here in Birkenhead. No, right. Who the hell was he? Well, I'll check, sir. The woman your husband has confessed to killing was a woman of 40, and she was a well-known prostitute. Well-known by whom, Julian? You? Oh, really? You needn't stay if you don't want to. And you think he could have killed again? Done someone else recently, like? He might have. He keeps on telling us how lovely this girl was. He can't remember her name. He's confused. All he was far from young and lovely. You see my dilemma. What do you want, then? The truth. Listen, Queenie. The man in Walton Prison that I saw just now is quite convinced that the girl he killed was a very beautiful woman and he was going to be hanged for killing her. Oh. Now, I believe he did murder Audrey Grantham in August 1955. He was 23 then. You didn't meet him until several years later, 1959. Look, Queenie, could he have killed since then? Could he have murdered oh. another woman? Oh. It's for his own good, Queenie, believe me. I've got to know everything. Oh, will you put him away? If we can prove anything, he'll get a stretch. Oh, he's been in and out of Nick all the time we've been married. Silly things, n nothing violent, not as he ever told me. Breaking and entering, mostly. I, I used to laugh at him. I'd tell him it, it might be worthwhile being put away if he got some of value. Now, when was he last inside? That would be... Just two years back. Sent down for a year, Doncaster. And when he came out? Well, he was back on the same lark. Well, not at first, about two months ago. Any big holes? Oh, we'd be in the Bahamas if there had been, not sitting here. And that's no lie. Had he changed? He was quieter, a lot quieter. He'd walk on his own, he'd drink on his own. Sometimes he'd never say a word all night, he'd just sit looking at the telly. Has he always been quiet? Over the years he's got quieter. Nothing you could put your finger on. You, you see, I, I'm quite a bit older than him. Not that years seem to matter. Well, well, not at first, anyway. What do they now? I didn't think so. You mean, until you've heard what he's done? Oh, not only that, a lot of other things. I... Sh should I have my solicitor? Have you got one? No. Don't write anything else down, Sergeant. Tom. No, you heard me, Sergeant. Did he leave you alone a lot? Look, there's a lot I could say, but what good's it going to do him? I'm not going for him. If a man is sick, I want to know why. I want to know if he definitely killed Audrey. I want to know if there's any others. That's all. You said earlier that he'd been going on about... about getting home. Well, well he had got a fear of it. In the pictures and on the telly, he'd get very angry. He said that people ought to get home. Once he chucked a glass at the telly, it broke, it did. Was he often violent? Drunk? He'd got a temper like any good man. He wouldn't stand no nonsense. Billy can take care of himself. Did he often get into fights? No, Bob. Nothing like that. Not, not that sort of temper. He'd get angry with himself. He'd sort of boil up inside. He'd be trying to say something, he'd explain to me what he felt, and he'd get mad with himself because he couldn't. And then he'd drink. Why did he sell things at the telly? Well, I told you, when there were those plays on about men in prisons, or even during things like the Avengers and them other sort of thrillers, so somehow they seemed to be getting at him underneath everything, well, then he'd go mad. Mad? Well, not not mad, really. I was kind of bottled up. He, he tried to argue with them. He'd want to say something to them, but he never could. Not really to them. I mean, they couldn't hear, could they? Ah, but you could, eh? He wanted them to understand what men really felt. Is that all? That's enough. You, you mean he was trying to explain what he knew to be the I truth? I don't know. Was this only about plays in which men were imprisoned or in which people were killed? Well, it didn't happen often, only occasionally. Don't try to make too much of it. Sometimes he'd want to disagree violently with what was being said, and, and he would. By breaking the television, by getting drunk, and no, by hitting you. No, eh? Look, you've told us a lot, no. Queenie. What are you he frightened wouldn't. of? Did he hit you? No, never. Why did he leave home last week? How did you know? Had he been knocking you about? Had he threatened to do you in like he killed Audrey Grantham and God knows who else? Had he I don't you? know. But you do, Queenie. You've got to tell him. Oh, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I can't tell can't? him. Can't? That's another lie, Queenie. Won't. 
You won't tell oh, me. Oh, right, then I won't. If that's what you think, I won't bloody tell you. You, oh, he beat you, Queenie. Did he do it often, every night? Did he knock you about he a lot? never touched I can't me. believe no, that. never, not once. He knocked you about me, threatened to kill you. No, he didn't. Did he do the same thing to other women? Did he tell you about them? Did he tell you about his oh, other women, Queenie? There weren't any other women. He never laid a finger on anyone else. Then he did assault you. Oh, Why no, did he leave home? No, I don't remember. Why don't you ask him? Oh, I have. You've asked him. Oh, I've asked him, Queenie. And he told me what he did. He told me. So I know, see? He never touched me. That's not what he said. He's lying. Oh, you are. He's lying. A bloody fool's lying. And why should he? He's got nothing to lie about now. Let me see him. I want to see him. That's why I come here. And what if he goes for you again? Well, one of you will be there this time. One of you... Why don't you leave me alone? Give Mrs. Simmons that cup of tea, Sergeant. It's cold now. Then get another one that's up. I don't need anything from you. I want a drink. So you can have one as well. <coughs> if you'll excuse me, Tom, uh, there are some things in the uh, office. Perhaps you could let me know what... Uh, I'll be there for some time, yes? Later, Julian. Later. I'm sorry that it's been so distressing for you, Mr. Simmons, but I'm sure it'll be better for your husband if you tell Mr. Flynn what you can. Come on, you better get that tea, Sergeant. Possessed. He has got some sort of manners. But tell me about it. Poor Billy. I, I knew something was wrong, but I, I didn't... Do you honestly think there's, there's more than one? Could be. You said to that young copper in Leeds that you knew he'd done something awful. But you wanted that young copper all over the coast for telling me Billy had killed an old pro. And you knew all along what he said and what I said. I knew. Well, then why pretend you didn't? I didn't pretend. You wanted him out the way, is that it? Nah, something like that. What made you ask the policeman in Leeds if she was a young girl? The same thing that made you want that copper out. Instinct. Oh, it was an instinctive reaction. It was the first thing I thought of because it was in my mind. What Billy had said to me was just there and it came out. And you think that that other copper is in my mind and that's why I tried to get him out. Well, you may be right. In fact, you probably are. Why do you dislike him so much? Look, I'm supposed to be asking the questions. Because he thinks he understands people. But in my case, it's files, statements, witnesses, collaboration. That's how the real flesh and blood people end up. One big, thick wadge stuck under under people's noses. Ask him what any of his witnesses are like. Ask him what makes a man commit a crime you try to understand. Oh, he'll probably believe he's understanding, but he won't. Not understanding. Well, you can. My turn now. Roles reversed. I asked the question. Yeah, well, one more. No one's ever told me your name. Flynn. Inspector Flynn. What do you want to know? Tell me why he tried to kill you. I haven't said he did. Look, if I'm to understand Billy, I have to know and you have to tell me. Now, I think Billy's confused and sick. Until I know everything about it, though, I can't hope to bring the whole truth out in court. And that's what we have to do if Billy is to escape a full murder rap. Uh, thank you. I'll call if we need help. Yeah, he looks all in. Shall I wake him? Mm. I don't think we were too popular arriving at this hour. The governor seemed quite curt. Wake him. Gently. Billy, wake up. Come on. Bring him again. Flat out, sir. He's not a little boy, John. Shake him. Oh. Gently. Oh, Come on, lad. Too late. What's he saying? Probably cursing us for waking up. Hello, Billy. <laughs> you remember me, don't you? Inspector Flynn, and this is Sergeant Trafford. We just want to ask you a few more questions. Oh, go away. I thought you'd like to know that uh, Queenie's come over to see you. Well, I won't see her. Queenie can go back home, see. What's she after now? Watch her. You watch her. You keep an eye on her. I do. Why, Billy? I told you. She steals. What did she steal, Billy? And I stopped that. <laughs> At school, they... Pushed a lad's head down the lava and it cut all his nose. Teacher came to him as well. Had he been stealing? Dinner money. How did she get you? Who? She was always trying to make me spend more money. Fur coats, makeup, taxis, never spend a penny of her own. Oh, no, not her. <laughs> well, well, why should she when she could live on me? But I told her no taxis, no expensive food. After all, she owed me something, didn't she? 
used to it, you know. What? Usually I get taken in taxis. Yeah, well, not by me. What? I said not by me. Don't you think I'm worth it then? Look, I've spent a small fortune on you all. Small already. fortune? A few shillings and a couple of babies? Ah, yes. I don't know what I'm getting in reason. I've told you. Oh, yes, yes, you told me. You are impatient. So, I like that. Shows you got a bit of gall about you. Oh, Hello. Do you remember what it's about, eh? It carry on like this much longer. I soon have forgotten. Where are we? Scotland Road. Do you own that house? Me and who's money? Just rent a room like. If you like. I'm the caretaker. Why did you start going on the job, then? Eh? Oh, we have to come around to chat about us, haven't we? What do you want? We like story. No, I'm just interested, see? You know, why you do it now? Oh, I thought you were something special. What's that mean? Special? Different? The same questions all the time. Why do you want to do it? Do you know how many times I've been asked that? Well, everybody wants to know that. What shall I tell you? Because there's tappies and mix and every other bloody type that can't get what they want somewhere else, so they come knocking on my door for rooms and whatever else they can lay their hands on. And every single one of you wants to know why. All right, no why? one's making why? speeches. Have you got a girlfriend? Have you? Well, ask her why we do it. Get your married fella to ask his missus why we do it. Because they need it. Want something we give them that their own women don't. I haven't got any girlfriend. Well, not like this, see? Oh, what am I supposed to do, Cry? Feel sorry for you. Hold your arm for you. I don't know. I go for 23, Tappy. You were still wet behind the ears. I thought I'd pick myself a man when you came. Now, now listen, you. Oh, I, I thought just... you didn't want everyone to hear. Well, I don't see. So you shut up, okay? You were asking the question. Yeah, well, not anymore. Too nosy by our Shut you are. up. You bore me. You don't exactly set the mercy alight with your own startling conversation. Oh, you want to know all about me. But the minute I want to ask about you, you get all bad-tempered and upset. You make me sick. Then let's get back to the house. Right? Get it over with. We get off next stop. Is this with a cap? Oh, you don't really like being out with me, do you? Make you feel embarrassed, do I? Let's get on with the food. I'm not stringing you along. Well, you know that, don't you? I mean, I do like you. I just want to get back to that house, see? Oh, let's get you grub eaten and quick. She was using me. If I'd been promised, I was entitled and she knew it. Playing for time, see? <laughs> Why was she playing for time, Billy? Because she was clever. They all are. Fingers into everything. Nothing safe. Not even when they lock you up in stinking halls like these. So, when they steal from you, you have to hurt them. Is that it, Billy? Well, you're a copper. It's wrong to steal, isn't it? Steal of your own like. The Queenie says she never stole from you. Yes, yeah, she would. But well, why should she lie? Because she wouldn't believe me. I killed her. That's why I came here. What more do you want? I killed her. Oh, God, I did. I did. And she was such a lovely thing, too. Wouldn't hurt to fly herself, too gentle, but I had to do it. Did you want to kill Queenie too? Look, Billy, do you think you should kill Queenie? I mean, is that why you wanted to tell us about it? Lying cow. Oh, you don't know what they like. She denied taking it. Oh, I, g I gave her a chance to tell me the truth, but she shouted at me, lies, but I knew she'd taken it, my money. And, and, and if, if she does it again, then, well, I've warned her, haven't I? She knows what I did to her last time. What the hell's he going on about? Queenie's told us about you hitting her, about you getting upset and drinking. I mean, why do you do these things, Billy? Is it because you killed Audrey? Eh? I... I thought her name was Amy. Amy. I can still see her face. You see, I... I can't forget her face. It was so fresh. Like an apple in Ross Williams' orchard. Uh, he's slipping off. I wonder how much he's taking in. I don't envy him one iota. Come on. Okay, we're ready to leave. A 
I don't honestly see why he had to dash over here at 12.30 in the morning. If anything, I'm only more confused. Yeah, so Simmons, he's talking about different people, different times and places, but they're all jumbled up. One minute it's Queenie, the next Amy or Audrey, and then this beautiful maiden in dire distress. And do you think he has guilt more than once? Oh, I don't know. I think he's wanted to, even if he hasn't. Hmm. What next? I mean, tomorrow, presuming we are getting some sleep tonight. Uh, confronted with Queenie and turn up Jenny Hutchings. That should make for a full program. I want to crack this one quickly, John. Yes? Trafford, sir. Good news. Oh, well? Jenny Hutchins came into the Oriel. Charlie gave her that the wink and he called me up. We followed her to a posh new estate just outside Ormskirk, attached to Bungalow, but she died. Look, we're not in real estate, John. Oh, good Lord, no, no. I, I want her in a detached bungalow surrounded by all her newfound wealth, from prostitute to luxury in 17 easy years. I think I feel quite jealous, young. You come straight over then? Uh, yeah, give the instructions how to get there to the desk shop. I just want to make sure Mrs. Simmons will be at Walton later this afternoon. Did you have any luck? Ah, uh, nothing. Still no sign of my Weston. Oh, and the milkman who went into the house with young Jenny after she'd phoned us couldn't remember a single thing about the whole business. He said he had absolutely no recollection of the house or the murder. Funny thing was, I believed him. Oh, and John. Yes. Elvis has passed on. Oh, who is he? Don't yeah, the milkman's horse. You very conscientiously jotted down his name in your original notes, and I conscientiously made inquiries as to his health. The milkman couldn't remember him either, but assured he must be dead as he had an electric float now. <laughs> and that I'd got a name. You know, I felt life meant nothing to that man at all. He seemed totally disinterested in everything. Yeah, not the very good witness that we wanted to call him. Yeah, but we don't. With Charlie, Jenny, and Weston, if we can find her. We're home and dry. Seventeen years of hard truths and tears will be finally laid to rest, and Simmons will get a couple of years for manslaughter. Right, see you in about an hour. Yes? Mrs. Jennifer Westmoreland? Yes. Call me Jenny Hutchins. I'm afraid you must have made some mistake. Now, if you wouldn't mind, I'm expecting my husband home anyway. And you wouldn't like him to see you with a strange man, not after all these years. What the hell do you mean? How dare you speak to me in that way? Oh, but you see, little Jenny, I do dare. And what's more, I'm enjoying it. Now, aren't you going to be hospitable and invite an old friend into your lovely house? Certainly not. And if you don't leave this instant, I shall call the police. You're being very unsociable, Jenny. You used to be all smiles and very, very friendly, remember? Look, I don't know what you want or who you are, but I'm warning you that my hubby will take very serious action against you if you do not go immediately. Still telling lies as well. Such a naughty little girl. Jenny the Fibber. Please, leave me alone. Hubby is in banking and has gone to a conference in Glasgow. That is not... In me. Glasgow. And we'll not be home until early Sunday morning. You were in the house alone because after you'd been for a drink in Ori Lam's public house this morning, you collected your two boys from friends and took them under the sandals at Formby. At 4.45pm, you took them to a party and you returned here exactly six minutes ago. Oh, and uh, the boys are called Jonathan and Mark. Is that all lies, Jenny? No. And it's not against the law, is it? So I'm easily recognised as a copper. Why did a respectable woman like you choose to go for a drink in a pub like the Ori Lounge? Is that a crime as well? well? Not at all. Although it used to have a very unsavoury reputation. It was frequented by a certain type of woman who you certainly wouldn't find living in a place like this, or would you? Well? How should I know? You should know, Mrs. Westmoreland, mother of two. Because 17 years ago, you were just such a girl, a common prostitute. I have never heard such fantastic insinuations in my oh, life. Oh, come off it, kid. Look, you lied to me 17 years back. And I warn you, you're not going to wriggle away this time. We've got him, Jenny. The bloke who killed Audrey. Look, I'm afraid I... Right, right, no more games. Look, I'm Tommy Flynn, as you well remember. Now, if you won't play ball the easy way, I'll make it difficult for you. How would you like your well-fed, cosy neighbours to have their illusions shattered about those very nice Westmoreland's? Or do you think a letter to the boys' school? Or possibly, even more effective, a suggestion to your husband that he do a little research into his wife's antecedents. All those are good, but a quick call to a newspaper would be the piece de resistance. You're bluffing. Try me! You'd better come in. Thank you. Oh, uh, and don't worry. I'll wipe my feet. Well? You're no longer denying that you're Jennifer Hutchins. I'm neither denying nor confirming. You do the talking. You heard about this man Simmons confessing to a murder in Birkenhead. Did he ring any bells? If it did. You knew Audrey Granson. 
You found her after she'd been stabbed by Simmons. Surely you felt something. And you think this man did it? Oh, I know he did, yeah. But you see, Jenny, I also know why. And this is where you can come in. Oh, how? When I first met you after the murder, you started blabbing away about how you knew it would all end up like this. You were hysterical and told me that you would tell me exactly what already had been up to. Then Ma Weston appeared as if by magic. And from then on, little Jenny shut up shop. No more confessions, only lies and more lies. I don't recall any of this. Well, let me refresh your memory. Now, we arrived at 64 Cedars Road at 7.43 a.m. on the morning of August the 14th, 1955. We found Audrey Gunson lying on the kitchen floor, very badly beaten and stabbed, but still alive. Now, you were in the room, and waiting outside was a milkman, uh, Herbert Phelps. You said, I knew this would happen one day. It wasn't bloody worth it, not for a few measly quid. A few minutes later, you stated that you'd seen Audrey on the afternoon of the 13th, and that you knew she'd gone to have a drink at the Oriel Arms public house in Everton. Shall I go on? If you want to. When Mer Weston came on the scene about 8.45 a.m., you began to change your story, or twist what you'd already said. Why, Jenny? Were you afraid of Ma? I can't remember. Oh, I dislike your source. You do realise I could have you put away from... Are you trying to blackmail me? Yes. All right. Now, what game were you and Audrey Granson working? I will not be bullied. Hello? Yeah, I want to speak to the editor, please. Never mind who it is. Just give him on the phone. He wouldn't listen. I'll take a bet on him being very interested. Put it down. Hello? Who? No, I want to speak to your boss. Please, put it down. I'll tell you what I can. Uh, look, uh, I'll be sorry, but I've just remembered something frightfully urgent. Yeah, thank you. No, not at all. Good night. Will I have to give evidence? Frightened you'll lose all this. Wouldn't you be? Possibly. Ask me what you want to know and I'll tell you if you're right. In August 1955, you were making a living as a prostitute. Yeah. You were resident at 64 Cedars Road. Yeah. And you were 17 years old. Well? Yeah. Did you have an arrangement, for want of a better word, that whilst your male clients were out whining and dining you, their valuables would be stolen from the rooms? Something like that. Did you yourself enter rooms, let to male clients of Audrey Gransom and remove money and other valuables? It's a long time ago! Answer the question! Yes. And did you enter the room of William Gwyn Simmons on the night of August 13th, 1955, and take from his suitcase an unspecified sum of money? I didn't know that was his name. What did you do with the money? I gave it all to her. Ma Weston. It was Ma Weston who told you to go to the room because she had a phone call from Charlie at the Oriel saying that Audrey and her bloke were well ensconced and that the coast was clear. Did Audrey pinch from your men when you were out? Leave me alone. Just leave me alone. You've got what you want. Aren't you glad we've got Simmons? Aren't you pleased, for Audrey's sake? Look, she's dead. I can't even remember what she looked like. That was another life. I live here now with Alexander, my husband, and the two boys. I left all that behind 17 years ago. Ah, but you can't just walk out on the past, Mrs. Westmoreland. I found you. Anyone else who really wanted to could do exactly the same. I was 17. And you were a prostitute, a thief, and a liar. Would have saved you a lot of trouble if you told me the truth then, you know. Ma Weston would have been put away. You'd have probably been put in care. Now it could all blow up in your face and destroy all this. I was 17. Yeah, and Audrey was 40 and Simmons 23. And now one of them is dead and the others are crazy. You're quite lucky, really. I should be prepared for the worst, though. Although, I'll say one thing. You have told me what I wanted to know. I won't tell the boys where to find you if I can possibly avoid it. I hope you enjoyed what you've just done. You had no need to come here. You knew it all already. But you had to put me through that for your own gratification. Well, I hope you're satisfied. I feel dirty and sick. I feel I could never face my family again. You learn. After all, you've managed to forget Audrey's face, remember? Isn't it time yet? Won't be long now. now. This won't be easy, Queenie. But I think it's essential that uh, you see Billy this afternoon before he becomes too confused in his mind to recognise you. 
And now, before we go along, you sure you thought of everything about Billy? Oh, I think so. Things are a bit muddled, you know. I'm still certain Billy's not a violent man. I don't think he's really a bad man. I mean, not deep down. Oh, but he has changed. But you mean this fixation he has? Yeah. About you being old and ugly? Something like that. It must be your own words. All right, my own words. Ugly, old, and a thief. A thief? You never said anything about Billy calling you a thief. Not calling. Implying. Locking up his money. Hiding things. Checking his shopping bags when I was going out. Silly, daft things. You should have told me. Well, I have now. When did this start, Mrs. Simmons? He'd always been careful with his money, but this last time, after he came out of Doncaster, it grew into a kind of obsession. I, I had to sew zips on all his pockets. He refused to take any money with him when he went out. Did you ask him why? I tried. But, Queenie, you must tell me. Well, he said, I, I was just like all the other bastards and couldn't be trusted. No one could be trusted, not even all those people closest to him. Queenie, did he give you any explanation? Well, you see, I thought it was some bloke had worked him over in the nick. But I was wrong, though, wasn't I? His money and all. It's got so much to do with all this business, hasn't it? You see, he was always counting it, hiding it, muttering to himself about people pinching it. He took to spending hours at it. And, and when I asked him why, that, that's when he turned on me, shouting and calling me names. Telling me I was old. And ugly. And a thief. Had Billy hit you before he went into Doncaster Prison that last time? No, never. Since he came out? More than once? John, get Mrs. Simmons a glass of water. Tell the governor we'll be a few minutes more, yeah? Okay? I'm glad you could come, Julian. How can I be of assistance? By just observing. Now, for the past two days, I've been trying to convince myself that Simmons did stab Audrey uh, Granson. Mm -hmm. uh, I've gone over all the old evidence and seen two of the three chief witnesses. There's still nothing on Mar Weston. Ah, uh, we can forget about her now. Now, in my final summing up report on this case, made on uh, April the 3rd, 1957, I said that I suspected that the person who stabbed Audrey Granson had done so because she had robbed him. Yeah. I further suggested that the attack was not premeditated, that the killer had probably panicked, grabbed all his stuff and dashed out of the house, disposing of the murder weapon at some later date. Mm -hmm. Now, at the close of this summing up, I made a somewhat prophetic observation that owing to a lack of evidence and because we had no real identification to work on, the killer would probably remain undetected until some new piece of evidence came to light or until he chose to give himself up. <laughs> Very prophetic. Yeah. And your inquiries to date have confirmed your observations? Yeah. Simmons' suitcase was rifled by young Jenny Hutchins, who then took the cash up to Mar Weston. In the morning, he happened to notice his money was gone. Chased after Audrey, who'd gone downstairs to make a cup of tea, and he's just putting out the money for the milk. He sees money in her hand, picks up a knife, and bobs your uncle. Well, that seems to have it all cut and dried. Uh, not quite. You see, I want to know what made Simmons decide to confess after 17 years. I also want to know why he's half out of his mind. Surely that's a job for the psychiatrist. Uh, perhaps. What do you intend to do? Confront Simmons with his wife and see what happens. All right, if you think it'll help. Thanks, Julian. Uh, John, ask for Mrs. Simmons to be brought along and stay outside with her until I call you. Right, sir. Now, if you'll come this way, we'll go and see Simmons. Billy. I killed her. Oh, I can't. You just get on with it. You just get on with it. Would you keep up by the door, Julian? Right. Thank you. Billy, what happened when you stabbed Audrey? You did stab her, didn't you? There was no noise. She made no noise. I told, I told you that. Did you stab her because she was stealing your money? I didn't mean to hurt her. She was such a lovely girl. I did really pretty. But you stabbed her all the same, Billy. Now, why? Tell me why. I can't. Keep her fingers off a thing. She's always stealing, always stealing, filthy old bitch. I stopped her, though. I can stop her good and proper. She won't steal again. She's what outside, she Billy. She wants grab, to grab, grab, all the time. She wanted me locked up, so she can have it all. But it's my money. Mine, so you stop Mine, it's mine. Mine. the knife and hit her again. And I again. You dirty old whore. The mother is here. Fifty quid. You nicked 50 quid. I don't know what you're talking you about. Not in your hand. A quid. For the milk. Toffee for the milk. Oh, please. <laughs> you dumb, bastard. 
You'll drink of it. You'll drink. Uh, 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 filthy, ugly. Oh. Now, John, let her in. Uh, Audrey uh, was pinching your money, so you killed her. Hello, Billy Love. You're all right. He took it. He took it and I killed her. But this is your wife, Mr. Sir. No, no. Oh, she is, Billy. Your wife. And you wanted to kill her, too, didn't you? Don't say anything, love. Don't say anything. Oh, Billy, you wanted to kill Queenie. She was stealing from you, too, wasn't she? She was nothing more than a thieving old bag. You wanted to murder your wife, as well as Audrey Grant. He didn't. He didn't. She was still there, you see? <laughs> she was beautiful. I, I don't think she was anything like you. Look, he doesn't know what he's saying. This is your wife. This isn't Audrey Grantham. She's been dead for 17 years. Why do you want to kill your wife, Billy? No one would listen. I told them I killed her. I tried to tell you, Queenie. I didn't want to do it again. But you can't kill the same person twice, Billy. You wanted to kill your wife because in your mind she'd become Audrey. You must believe me. I didn't want to do it. Not again. She's really dead, Billy. You've got it all muddled like. You thought I was pinching off you and I wouldn't do that. I warned you not to take things from me, Queenie. I did warn you. I never stole anything from you, love. Never. It was our Audrey. The woman in Liverpool. She stole from you. Not me. That's why I hit her. You've done that to me as well. You hit me as well, you know. You thought I'd been pinching from you, and I hadn't, love. I hadn't, I swear. Queenie, I told you I'd done it. No one believed me, but I, I knew. I, I could see her all the time. What was she like? What was Audrey like, Billy? Was she like me, Billy? Old, ugly. Was that it? Sometimes she is. I, I don't think I remember. Oh, Queenie, let, let me try to understand. I... I thought you were dead, but but she is. She, she really is. I think that's enough, Tommy. Come along, Mr. Simmons. Oh, you were very beautiful as a girl. You had the nicest eyes. Always smiling. We'll see you tomorrow, Billy. Try not to think about it tonight. And I'll see you tomorrow. Collect up the bits and pieces, would you, Travis? Yes, of course, sir. I never meant to hurt you, Queenie. You must believe that. But sometimes it wasn't you I could see. I think she knows that, Billy. See you tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. It's not so far off, is it? Of course, he'll have to be examined by psychiatrists. Oh, I wouldn't know anything about them. They have a jargon all to themselves. They might get better if they reverse roles on the couch. Do you think Simmons has a fair chance of fully appreciating what happened to him over the years? Well, we can't be certain that I'm right. I think I am. I believe that's how my man acted. He became convinced in his own mind that Audrey Granson was a beautiful young woman. He had brutally murdered. He tried to rid himself of this guilt feeling by spending long periods in jail. When this didn't alleviate his mental suffering, he turned on his wife. He saw her as a replacement for Audrey, and she became the thief and the prostitute. In the end, he beat her and tried to kill her. Do we know that for certain? Well, Queenie told me a great deal, but uh, she held out about the beatings. Finally, she let slip about this thief business. You know, I'm quite certain that Simmons went for her. And in his mind, he half realized what he'd done, and he somehow managed to make his way to the newspaper office. Why, then he was too far gone to be coherent. So you think, in his own way, he was trying to protect Queenie from emotions he could no longer control? Yeah, something like that. Well, I'll be off as soon as I can. I will, of course, come up for the trial if you need me, but uh, mm. I think John can handle it. Oh, uh, yes? What is it, Trapper? Uh, I just thought I'd let you know, sir, we've located Ma Weston. It hardly seems necessary you're going to see her now. I can't see us preferring charges against Ma Weston after 17 years. Uh, I'd like to see Weston, if only for old time's sake, and to complete my trio of witnesses. Mm, all right. But remember, she must be at least 100. Go easy on her. And, Tommy, well done. Thanks, Julian. I enjoyed working with you. Good luck with your promotion. Colonel? Inspector Flynn has been mother. Thank you, Sister Colonel. Please come in, Inspector. It is nice to see you after so long. You did know I'd left Birkenhead, Mother. I think a little bird had whispered something to that effect. This is not a social call, is it? Is there someone in particular you wanted to see? Uh, there is. Uh, old Ma Weston. Ah. 
She is still alive. Oh, very much so. I would say without any hesitation that she is our liveliest patient. Hardly a day passes without her indulging in some little mischief. She is a great delight to us all. Mm -hmm. She would be. I take it you don't exactly approve. Well, she's an old woman now, but, well, I knew her a long time ago, Mother. Oh, so did I, Inspector. Uh, Mrs. Weston has been with us for seven years now. I think I had known her for well over 20 years before that. Well, could I see her then? Of course. Yes, Mother? Would you bring Mrs. Weston to me, please, Sister Karma? Of course, Mother. Uh, how long is it since you saw Mrs. Weston? Oh, 17 years, something like that. I had occasion to interview her in connection with one of her girls. Oh, her girls? Do you know she still refers to us as her girls? She's always most concerned that we look our best. I think she misses quite a number of them. You think so? Oh, don't judge her too harshly, Inspector. Do you know she still has quite a few visitors? Some of them are respectably married, but they still come to see her. One or two have fallen on hard times. But they say they like to come and cheers them up. But some of these girls were only kids, Mother. I mean, old Ma Weston set them up on the street. Oh, you're wrong, Inspector. She did not set them up. As you say, far from it. She gave most of them a home, a place to live. She looked after her girls in the only way she knew possible. Of course, it was wrong. I'm not denying that. As a nun, how could I? But in a city like this, some lonely girls ended up with Ma Weston, and some ended up with me. I blame it on the conditions in which girls like those were forced to grow up. Come in. Mrs. Weston, Mother. Well, thank you, Sister. You may leave. Yes, Mother. There's a gentleman to see you, Mrs. Weston. An old friend. Oh, a gentleman? Oh, how nice. Oh, oh, you haven't forgotten me, then. I, I keep telling the girls here how good you all are to me. But, but they're a bit stiff-lipped, you know. Not like the old days. Do you remember me, Ma? Oh, no, 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 of course I do. I never forget a face. Can you hear the music? It's quite lovely, isn't it? It's, it's a, a waltz, I think. Some of the young ones are so nervous, and I always think music is a great soother. But, but, but you're not nervous, are you? I can tell that. <laughs> oh, they're such dear girls, all of them. Very loyal. Uh, they still come to visit me, you see, despite my circumstances. How long has she been like this? For about four years. Don't pay any attention to her. She refuses to dress properly. Anyone would think we were running a, a funeral parlor. But uh, I, I had some lovely clothes for the girls. They love to look nice. A young man will always be polite if a girl is suitably dressed. And between ourselves. I think you could look so much more handsome if you took a little more care with your clothes. Creases are a sign of an untidy mind. Uh, yes, uh, Mrs. Weston. Uh, Ma, it's Tommy Flynn. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions. I don't think you'll have much success. Well, can she remember anything? Oh, plenty. But she's no longer very logical. No, I can see that. She lives in a dream world of her own. She's quite convinced herself that everything she ever did was quite beautiful and to the benefit of everyone around her. Good for her. Very convenient. Oh, she believes it, Inspector. Whatever she did make of her life, she has managed to remember only the good things. Perhaps at first she had a sense of guilt and remorse. Uh, she certainly used to tell me some pretty awful stories. But gradually she shut those out and they very rarely return. Her past life is gone, blotted out. All that remains is what she now chooses to recall. You're taking a long time to decide. They can be very strict, you know. Come here. I want to tell you something. We are all going on holiday next week. All of us. Now, don't you breathe the word, mind you. It's to be a surprise. How they'll love. Oh, no. 
No, I, I won't talk about money. Uh, there's a little box as you go out. I always ask you to leave something just to help my poor girls. No one else will. Uh, I will, ma'am. Uh, there's a sweet boy, and they're so terribly young, some of them. Little more than children. <laughs> eh? How about a kiss for me before you go? I'm not too old to appreciate a little affection. And there isn't very much of that allowed in here, you know. A bit on the side, but it's frowned on. Uh, thank you, Mother. Yes, Mother? Sister is going to take you back to your room, Mrs. West. Oh, oh such a lovely girl, this one. Delicate features, haven't you, my dear? And such lovely golden hair. But they will keep it covered up. Very foolish. I keep on telling them. Goodbye, Mark. If you'd only listen to me, I could make you a real beauty. Then you could have the pick of the young man. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Sister Karma. <laughs> Are you disappointed? Was it important? To me. I won't be disturbing you again, Mother. I suppose she's better off as she is. You can tell. I think, though, when you've lived as she has done, that it's better to forget than to be haunted all the time by memories and half-truths. She's happy now, and I wouldn't want that change. Ah, perhaps you're right. I'll see Miss Hope out, Mother. Thank you again for letting me see her. I enjoyed working with you again, sir. Well, don't leave another two and a half years before getting in touch. <laughs> I'm glad Simmons only got a year. He seems much better already. Aye. He's very upset about Queenie disappearing like she has. I just hope she doesn't run out on him permanently. You could hardly blame her, I suppose. In our own ways, we all try to escape from things at times. You know, it's funny. I never thought when I first come back on the case just over a month ago that I'd feel any sense of regret at leaving Birkenhead. But I do. All right. Still, they are. Well, cheerio, John. And good luck with Mr. Richards. I think he learned a thing or two. Thank you. Remember me to your good lady. Ah, oh, well, sir. Right, sir. Uh, platform five, I think. Seventeen years back, the cast was as follows. Inspector Flynn, Robert Keegan. Sergeant Trafford, Jeffrey Matthews. Superintendent Richards, John Pullen. Bill Simmons, Alan Downer. Queenie Simmons, Barbara Mitchell. Audrey Granson, Kate Binchy. Charlie Williams and desk clerk, Henry Stamper. Jenny Hutchins and Sister Carmel, Judy Bennett. Ma Weston, Catherine Parr. And Mother Superior, Sheila Grant. Seventeen Years Back was written by Martin Jenkins and produced by Jerry Jones.